today's Toy Spot, we are having a look at the Diamond Select Toys Ghostbusters Select Ray Stands Deluxe Action Figure. When news first broke that Diamond Select was going to be giving us a Ghostbusters theme line, I was so excited. Then we saw images of what the figures were going to be look, looking like, and my excitement level increased immensely. I'm sure as many Ghostbuster collectors out there know, the Mattel line really seriously, yeah, it really stunk. It dropped the ball. It was not really to what Ghostbuster fans wanted from an action figure line. And now comes Diamond Select's interpretation of the figures, which are much bigger. They have a lot more personality, if you ask me, and they have a lot more accessories and stuff going for them. So I'm really excited to see what Diamond Select is going to be giving us for the Ghostbusters line. Down below, we have Ray Stance, Dan Aykroyd, of course, a gentleman who I'm sure would love to do more Ghostbuster movies, but as, as it is, we're going to be getting Ghostbusters reboot. Side of the package features Dan Aykroyd there with his ecto goggles wearing on his head. And on the back, the figure itself, collect. Now, this is the cool part. Collect, not the fact that the box is tipping, but collect all 12 figures to build the rooftop scene. Not only do you have the incentive, because obviously you will want to be getting Ghostbuster figures, but the incentive is also that you can be able to build a rooftop scene. Other figures available from Series 1 was Lewis Tully and Winston Zedmore. I think Dana Barrett initially was going to be released as part of that wave too. Maybe they just have pushed her back a bit. A read-up says Dr. Raymond Stans was performing psychological research in a large New York City university when his funding was unceremoniously uh, cut, leaving himself and his colleagues Egon Spangler and Peter Venkman out of work. However, a close encounter with a phantasm gave the trio the data they needed to catch and contain a supernatural entity, inspiring a new group venture, the Ghostbusters. Ray purchased an empty firehouse for the group, and while business was slow at first, a localized spike in paranormal activity soon made them the toast of the town. Well-versed in religious text and the occult, Ray is also a technical wizard designing the proton packs, neutrino wand, and ghost traps with Egon. He also does his own work on the Ghostbusters car, the Ecto-1. This 7-inch scale action figure is based on 1984 feature film Ghostbusters and features multiple points of articulation as well as accessories and diorama parts. It was sculpted by Gentle Giant Studios. You can also head over to www.diamondselecttoys.com if you want to check out the other Ghostbusters that they're going to be releasing, as well as a multitude of all the other properties as well. Spot's going to take a break, and I'm going to get this opened up when we come back. However, we're going to get a better look at the Ghostbusters Select Race Stance. There's more heading away, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Just before we have a look at Ray Stance, uh, the folks, oh, there goes Ray. I'm actually just going to lay him down for a second. The folks over at Diamond Select Co Toys give you a uh, little pamphlet showing you some of the pieces that they've released before from a logo, Pizza Cutter, Slimer Bank. We've had a look, of course, at a ton of mini mates that they were originally releasing back in the day. And you've got your three figures currently being released from First Wave. On the back, a couple of different variations of Stay Puffed. And then we've got a couple of logo openers. And we got some silicone trays. Not really much to touch base on pamphlet-wise currently, but of course as we get more figures coming out, this pamphlet will get a little beefier. Put that to the side. <clears throat> Race Stance also comes with one of the 12 pieces that are going to be giving us a much larger diorama. And I'm looking at the display stand. I'm just trying to kind of gauge where we are on this. This looks like the area where the terror dog would be sitting on top. I'm hoping Diamond Select Toys of the 12 figures that they have announced on the back of the package, hopefully two of them are terror dogs. I'm just holding out hope. We have the NECA released terror dogs as well. If you remember, Spot had to look at those. They had the light up eyes. I'm saying presumably they could go up on here or you could put the Dana Barrett or Lewis Tully up there. There is also a socket piece because it also comes with a tower. 
And there's really no instructions necessarily included with the Ghostbusters figures, so I'm just kind of gauging that this is how everything is going to come together. This looks like the flat surface where the Terror Dog will sit, or again, anyone, uh, Lewis, Tully, or Dana Barrett. But just to kind of show you, I mean, that's one piece of 12 pieces. I'm assuming not all 12 pieces are going to be this size, but it just shows the level of care and detail that Diamond Select are putting into the pieces that we're not just going to be getting, you know, like a little small uh, diorama. We're getting something substantially large. And again, that's what it looks like. You can see how the two halves are going to connect together. I'm assuming it's only also going to be about this wide, and then maybe the back is going to build up. Not quite certain, but we'll know soon enough when we start having a look at the other figures that Diamond Select are releasing. So in the meantime, we'll move the display stand out of the way just because, well, it's so big. And let's have a look at Ray's stance. Um, I don't have, at the time that we're looking at this, at this figure, I don't unfortunately have the Mattel figures anymore. I have long since parted ways with this, probably in the same way that most Ghostbusters collectors parted ways with their figures or will part ways with their figures when they start feasting their eyes on these fantastic figures. It certainly goes to show that giving the proper license to the right toy company equals a, again, a really spectacular and successful, I hope this line is going to be successful, successful line of toys. Ray Stans is seven inches tall. He's a little bit taller than the Mattel line. And, uh, well, where do we start? Well, let's have a look at his face. We'll start at his face. We'll work our way down. The face on Ray Stans is very good. Part of me wishes I did have the Mattel that we can do a comparison to, but I feel like where Mattel made the line for money and to sell just as much as they could sell, Diamond Select seems to be making it as a personal love and passion for the line. You can really see a lot of that conveyed in these figures. They're bigger, they're bulkier, they don't use, or from what we've seen so far, there's only Ray Stance and Winston Zedmore, they obviously are going to reuse components, but it just seems like there's a little more care in this line than the Mattel. I would say likeness-wise, it's a good likeness to Dan Aykroyd, and equally so Ray Stance. It's almost got a more slightly animated treatment, though it does have rooted realistic elements to it. It does also convey a slight animated style to it as well. Like, it does obviously look like him from the movie, but it looks just a little, a little on a more simplified line. And, and taking nothing away from Diamond Select, I mean, that, that's a fantastic likeness of Dan Aykroyd. The one thing I will say, though, sadly, is, and I don't know if you can see it, the eyebrow on both, both eyes are sculpted in, but unfortunately the paint that they've applied is just above the eyebrow. The eyebrow is actually right there. The painted eyebrow is right above it. From a distance, you will not notice it. But, you know, when you start looking at it a little bit closer, you might see that the eyebrow, or at least on mine, that the eyebrow isn't quite painted in the right positioning. That's small. That is very, very small versus the overall, which is just a great looking figure. He is packed with his proton pack on his back. Right there. There's a little bit of red that's been bled down there, unfortunately. But other than that, quite a nice looking piece. All the wires, even the labels, the little warning labels, the danger label and the little warning indicator labels, right even on the top, are applied to the proton pack. Something sadly, and I don't want to do, keep doing a comparison back and forth, but sadly, not something that Mattel even re really even cared about, it seems. The uh, the proton wand or neutron wand uh, is connected to the proton pack. The proton pack, by the way, is a separate piece. But like looking at the way it's been assembled, I don't see a way that you can actually remove it. Uh, again, the straps could theoretically come off, I guess, if you found a proper way to get them off the shoulders. But then he's got the front middle belt harness that's kind of keeping everything together. There are no instructions indicating that the proton pack can come off and showing you a successful way of accomplishing it. 
So I would say I wouldn't mess around with it. You want to break, accidentally break the straps attaching it. Maybe if you wanted to get two rays, you could have one ray without the proton pack and then the other one, you know, keeping the proton pack in check. The proton stream or neutron wand, um, there is, again, there's really no instructions indicated, but there's like a little tab point here. I don't know if you can hopefully see it, but the little prong, if I can kind of tip it up, sticks a little out where there's a gap in between it. Theoretically, there's no, I can't see a peg point where this attaches to the proton pack. However, there is a slot just on the side there that you could take the proton wand and you can attach it by sliding that groove against the notch of the proton pack. And it actually does hold the, the wand in place. It doesn't go anywhere. It's not probably the most connected to the proton pack, but at least it stays attached to it if you don't want to display the figure necessarily with the proton wand in hand. There you go. Some of the other details on Ray's stance, he's got a little compartment on his belt. He's got little uh, sections on here as well. Now, it does look like a lot of the pieces are reused from one another. We haven't looked at uh, Winston Zedmore yet, but presumably a lot of this is going to be reused. They might mix and match belt compartments. Now, Peter Venkman obviously will have a different boot at the bottom there with the pant leg. Other than that, though, they're probably going to be making use of a lot of the same molds, and that's fine, because the mold itself is a bigger, bulkier, more realistic mold than that of Mattel. Uh, one of his accessories, Ray Stance, also includes a walkie-talkie, just cast in black. There is that section on the front where you can take the walkie-talkie, try not to bend the antenna also, and that slides into the front. Uh, before we have a look at some of the other accessories, let's, you know what, let's bring the camera in and have a look at some of the other things on his outfit. He's got stance on his on his front name pouch there, a little uh, patch there. The Ghostbusters logo, which also does not carry over to the other side. He's got a couple of rubber, rubbery material uh, elbow pads that actually does a pretty good job of hiding the articulation on the elbows. A really nice touch. He's got the hose that comes out from his pant leg that carries up to the back of the belt section here. As for the other accessories, Ray Stance also comes with a pair of ecto goggles that you can either put on to the top of his head. And uh, it's the culprit is kind of the hair. You have to fight a little bit to get the goggles over top of his hair. Because it, as you can see, it does the hair does stick out quite a bit. The easiest thing to do is probably, and you'll knock the proton wand off in the process, is to get it over his hair and then just try to slide the strap along to the back there. And you can kind of get it going on there, although you'll get this extra bunch here. Or you can also have the ecto goggles higher, you know, as if he's in the uh, the hotel there. This actually doesn't even serve as much of a purpose. Um, it could also have been a little bit shorter because really a lot of the one that's do doing the work is the strap that's wrapping around uh, the ecto goggles here. So it's a pretty good look. Again, if you had a couple of ray stance, you know, you could theoretically have one without the proton pack. You could have one without the goggles. You could have one wearing the goggles. A lot of potential for this line. We'll just take the goggles off. We'll put that to the side. This kind of ends up falling off a couple of times, but as you saw earlier, you can kind of, again, just tab it into place, get it out of the way. Let's have a look at the proton or neutron wand right there. Very accurate to the movie. Not a lot of paint other than the silver on the ends. There's a little bit of silver right at the tip here and a little bit of the red on that tube on the back. Uh, the Ghostbusters all seem to also come with a proton stream cast in just a singular orange plastic with a little bit of the electric blue wrapping around it. 
The thing about the Proton Stream though, there doesn't seem to be any place to peg it into the actual wand. You see on the end, the wand has no hole on the end of it. That if theoretically it did, you could attach the Proton Stream to that. Now I would not probably advise, you could take maybe a thumbtack, just kind of work away making a hole on the front of the wand where the stream would attach itself into it. Because it's a small enough, it's a small enough peg that you could theoretically get it attached to the actual wand. As a quick fix, which you can also do too, that same ledge that I showed you how to attach to the proton pack, you could also finagle getting the wand stream actually just clipped into it. Yes, from the one side it's a little more apparent that it doesn't look like it's attached to the proton wand, but the other side does a pretty good job, and especially if you're showing it from a distance, you're not going to see it as much. The other accessories that come with Ray's stance, he comes with an extra pair. He comes with a pair of flesh hands. He also comes with four extra flesh hands, depending on how you want to have him holding maybe the proton wand uh, or some of the traps. Winston's going to have with a trap, so I mean you can have you know Ray stance holding the trap with one of the hands. And a pretty clever thing by Diamond Select, he also comes with a pair of gloved hands. And we'll just put Ray here just for a second. Hopefully he stands. I do have to really get a display stand going for these guys. Flat surfaces, no problem. This surface, this fabric surface that Spot uses, tends to be just a pain in the butt sometimes to get figures to properly stand. Anyways, Ray does also have a pair of gloved hands. But the neat thing about it, not only are you changing the hands themselves via this peg, but they also give you the cuff or the extension out from the glove that you can then put over top of his hands. Very cool. And just as an example, let's go ahead and pull his hand off like that. Just a very simple peg. Take the glove and you're just basically sliding over his existing sleeve cuff. Then go ahead and put the hand that you want to use. Now Diamond Select gives you four hands, all with the gloves. Theoretically, you really don't need necessarily the glove end for every single hand. You really only need two of them because they look like they share the exact same. So you have really extras. Um, I probably will display Ray stance probably with the gloved hands rather than the human hands, but you can see the differences between the two. For your articulation, Ray stance does have a ball joint in the head. He has hinged shoulders, which seem to hinge out just fine, which also rotate all the way around. He's got a bend point right in the elbow, which is really stiff on this figure. But as you can see, if I just move the elbow pad out of the way, there's the hinge right at the back. He has a swivel point also in the hand, also hinges at that hand section. He has an upper torso ball joint, a little limited because he's got the strapping across there but still does a pretty good job of moving around. Uh, also, he has a waist. Well, he doesn't have a... Well, he, he doesn't have a waist swivel necessarily because a lot of it is residing on the top torso ball joint. Legs hinge forward, back, and out via a V-cut in the, the actual leg area. A top swivel cut in the thigh. He has a double hinged in the knee. And he also has a pivot point and a hinge in his feet or his boots there. And just get him all straightened out here. Yes, I must say the Diamond Select Ghostbusters figures so, so far from what I've seen only with Ray. Now we still have to have a look at Ray St uh, Winston Zedmore and Lewis Tully. But so far I'm pretty impressed with this line. Oh, and also, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> I was just going to say, there is a clip. I was actually just wrapping this video up, and I noticed that there was a clip here. There's a clip right on the side there. Right there. And that clips over top of, which actually is a lot easier than me trying to fight it over on this section. You'll want to use the clip on the side there. And that actually tabs very easily, very securely in place. There you go. 
Diamond Select have done an outstanding service to the Ghostbusters line. I'd hate to think that the legacy of Ghostbusters resided solely in the hands of Mattel because that line absolutely <laughs> sucked. I'm going to say it, it sucked. It goes to show that if you give the line to the proper toy company, what you end up getting is absolute gold. Uh, so far, we've only gotten Ray Stance, Winston Zedmore, and Lewis Tully, but I am super excited to see what the 12 figures are going to be, and hopefully, we might even get ourselves some ghosts, and ooh, Vigo. Vigo would be so awesome, if, again, given to the right company, not Mattel. Today's Toy Spot, we were having a look at the Diamond Select Ghostbusters Select figures. We're looking today at Ray Stance. A gorgeous figure. I might even say this has potential to be the line for 2016. One of the best toy lines. Certainly stay tuned guys. Spot's going to have the review of Winston Zedmore right around the corner and we're going to be also having a look at Lewis Tully. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. <music>